So, do you constantly have trouble with enemies always knowing where you are, not having enough firepower, or just generally sucking at completing no return? Well, here are some of the biggest tips and mistakes that I also wished I knew before starting out. Let's not waste any more time and get right at it. First things first, always make sure you fill out these dead drops, which are the blue boxes you can see from the distance via their distinctive icons. Now, they kind of become available almost every other level, and all you need to do is to place inside items that you normally can craft anyway or find within the same level. So, stuff like med kits, explosive, molotovs, and throwables, and so on. But once you do finish that level successfully, at the end of it, you will get an extra free item on top, which could be either a weapon or a useful crafting recipe. Normally stuff that you have to spend currency on the trading post to get in the first place. And trust me, you will absolutely need the extra firepower, especially against some of these final boss encounters that can become quite challenging. Plus, there are quite a few achievements in there that also require you to get all of the guns in one single run, especially for some of these new suits added in the remaster. Speaking of collecting extra stuff, and number two, pay close attention to the capture game mode, as this is going to contain a safe with a ton of mats and crafting parts inside that you can then use to upgrade your gear and character, pretty much as much as completing one extra level. However, this is always going to be protected by a very large group of enemies that always sticks very close to it, plus there's a very short countdown timer of about only 2 minutes. So within that time frame, you either have to infiltrate and open it up without being noticed or dispatch all enemies before the timer runs out. So I always go in guns blazing because it's a lot easier, you don't really have enough room in there to even infiltrate, that is why I recommend stuff like molotovs and pipe bombs to quickly take down enemies before they even react, and usually like multiple at a time. And once you open them up, you're going to get all of these, like I said, it's going to help you a ton to further funnel them into buying extra items or upgrading the stuff that you already have. At number 3, let's talk about making the most out of the trading post. As you can see, this can cycle through all weapons, upgrades, and recipes. However, with the exception of Jesse, all of the other characters can only reset this once. So at any given time, you can only cycle through a batch of 4, and then another batch of 4, and that is pretty much it. That's why I always recommend to visit this both before and after completing a level to see if you can get a good weapon or upgrade for your character. You really don't want to hoard on currencies too because you're going to have more than enough by the time you finish the second last level before the boss fight and you really don't want to be stuck in a position to have a lot of currency but no more trading post resets to buy extra items. So the way I do it is I always buy items or upgrades every level I can starting from the second level and onwards before reaching the boss fight just so you can get as much as you can before going through the final boss encounter. Again, the only exception is Jesse, who can just infinitely reset this, so in his situation, you don't really have to worry about that. At number 4, it's always a good idea to plan ahead the route that you want to take towards the boss, because there are different branches with different rewards, enemies, and especially so, pay attention to the skill lines that you can unlock along the way. So this is going to be dependent on the character and playstyle you want to adopt, however, there are a few things I recommend doing. One of them is to always try to get the Perseverance skill line. This is something that Ellie starts with by default, but other characters can get it too, and it's very good for the Endure mechanic. This will turn an otherwise lethal enemy blow against you into something that just leaves you at low HP. So especially useful against boss encounters that oftentimes can one-shot you by default. But from this point on, it's going to again depend on the character, so if you want to play with a stealthy character like Jesse or Lev, I always recommend going with Covered Ops or any of the other skill lines that let you more easily take down enemies from the cover, listen to enemies and hear them from much further away, or just remain undetected for a lot longer. Similarly, if you want to play up in the open, if you go with Abby or other melee characters, you can go with the Brawler and Unstoppable and kinda create this killing machine that constantly heals up and also deals strikes against enemies to take them much faster. Plus, there are skill trees in there to even repair your melee weapons and turn them much stronger. Again, you're going to go through these, learn them and then apply them best to the characters you find the most enjoyable. At number 5, a particularly strong move in combat is throwables. That's why you will always want to have with you a bottle, a brick, or maybe even a molotov. This is by far the best 
whenever you're being surrounded by enemies or they have an advantage like for example you're low on bullets but they keep shooting so this can actually stun them for several seconds and an end case in which you can follow up with a quick grab if you want to remain silent or follow up with an instant one shot and it works both against humans as well as zombies with the exception of the big boss encounters it's always a good idea to carry them with you also for distraction means so if you're being circled around and you want to have them look the other way you can just throw a bottle and kind of go behind them or flank them real quick before engaging in combat but even more so molotovs if you can craft them are especially devastating once you can increase their range and the area of effect you can actually take down multiple enemies and easily dispatch an entire group before they even get a chance to do anything against you or even more so you can use it as a melee weapon so if you just hit an enemy while wielding one of these throwables you can again instantly one shot them and then follow up with a quick takedown before they get a chance to do anything the same goes with the melee range you really want to use the element of surprise as a one-shot mechanic because if you do a melee attack from a corner or before an enemy even sees you this actually means you're going to one-shot them otherwise it can take up to two three even four hits depending if you're fighting a bigger enemy or not and you really don't want to be stuck there doing fist fights while their teammates are shooting at your back at number 7, one thing you might notice is at the start of certain levels, especially hunting modes, enemies perfectly know your position and that's actually intended they start the level by knowing exactly where you are and you're supposed to actually disengage from that location circle around flank them and re-enter stealth before they see you again this is in fact something that i recommend always doing at the start of every level and not only that especially in loud fights so let's say a gunfight has broken out you've taken down an enemy or your silencer went out or you just alerted other enemies immediately disengage engage from that location and try to flank the enemies that are not going to be drawn to that loud sound location and this is going to give you an opportunity to actually approach them from better angles maybe flank them take them down multiple at the same time especially if you can set down traps or use explosives at their feet again never stay in the same spot you're always going to get overrun if you do so Moving on to number 8, you can use various of the mods or modifiers for a level at your advantage to take down enemies without ever moving a muscle. And there are two of them that I really enjoy. One of them are these explosive traps and the other modifier are of course the chain down clickers, both of which you can use against entire groups of enemies. So in the case of the explosive traps, these are very good against the zombie runs. You can just stay behind them and usually they will run in explode and you can easily clear down an entire wave before ever shooting a single bullet but by far my favorite are these chain down clickers you will have of course to be very silent behind them otherwise they will just jump on you but you can take down that chain and your enemies are just going to be loud enough to alert them immediately clickers as you know are completely relentless they will chase you until the end of the earth and once these enemies start panicking they will not stop making a lot of noise so you can just circle around the map free as many of them as they are available and then just have them destroy these waves of enemies plus it's very satisfying to look at even though it is quite gruesome now one thing we haven't covered is gambits these are special little challenges that you can complete each level that can provide extra resources healing and pretty much within these lines that will further help progress with your character now you start with some low level gambits at level one but as you complete more and more of them you will unlock progressively higher tier ones that are also a bit more challenging to complete but will provide even better resources so stuff like doing a number of headshots in a short amount of time against a number of enemies taking them down without being noticed and all that kind of stuff so usually stuff that just forces you to play even better that you're going to want to do plus your final score will also get influenced by the gambits you complete so you can gain some extra points if you want to push for the highest score possible especially worth it for the leaderboards and finally on the collection game one thing that you can do to grab all of the items and all of the collectibles within the same level like crafting items and all of that is by just clearing out all of the enemies in one wave with the exception of the last one 
So if you do so, the last enemy in any single wave is always going to be marked in front of you, so you will always know their position. This means that especially if you're fighting a zombie, for example, you can quickly disengage, go to the other side of that level, and just collect all of the items over there before you actually turn on to the next wave or clear out the entire level. This is especially useful to craft items, get ready for the next levels, or if you want a lot of explosives for the final boss encounter, this was the way I did it and it was extremely useful to have all of the available crafting mats at all time. The only thing remaining to talk about is of course the boss fights, there are 6 of them in total, the same ones from the main story that you will progressively unlock, with the final one and the most dangerous being the Rat King. However, in most of these situations, I found that it's not just the bosses that spawn, but also smaller zombie adds, and it's usually also in some very tight cramped spaces like small buildings or parking lots. So in this situation, weapons like shotguns, double barrel, or the sawed-off are going to be extremely good once those smaller enemies come in and overrun you, you can line them up and take them down quickly without wasting too many bullets. Also, I recommend using incendiary shells for the shotguns against the boss as this can keep them busy for a few seconds as you set them on fire. On top of this, like I said, throwables such as pipe bombs and molotovs are going to be especially useful over here. Just make sure you don't throw them in your face, but if you do at the enemy's feet, you will deal a ton of damage, usually AoE, take down many enemies and also deal a ton of damage to sad bosses. And from that point on, just run, deal damage, run, deal damage, usually this is how you're going to win these fights. And that is pretty much it with the game mode. Let me know down below if you're excited to play this. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.